Hello Hitfilmers and welcome back to Stefan's Bilderwelt with another beginner's tutorial. Today I would like to show you how to Yes, how to freeze somebody. I think you can do this in every version of HitFilm, so just try it and let me know what you think. If you like it, please put your thumb up, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. Okay, let's get started. I have got a standard project, 9020 by 1080 and 50 frames. Okay, bring in your main clip, find a point, point where you want to freeze somebody, so it's the last frame, options, export frame, give it a good name, in my case still 2, save and re-import the frame, bring it to your timeline at the very end and there it is. So now I apply the color difference key and the spill removal, it looks like this. I mark them both, copy them and paste them onto the still image. Okay, this looks quite good. So let's close those two, bring in a background. In this case, it's a little clip with moving particles. So we have the still image in front, but the background is still moving. The next thing would be to mask out the actor. So we move to a, yeah, just any point. Make sure you select the still image, select the BCA mask tool, and then the hard work has to start. So just go around your actor, be kind of accurate, not too accurate because we will feather out the mask afterwards anyway. So I speed this up a little bit. The mask is ready. Make sure you select the arrow again. So now we have to import yeah, a picture of ice. I'm sure you will find something if you ask good old Google. So it's just a layer of ice a picture. So I will bring this inside my composite shot. Make sure the picture starts just where the still frame starts and then I scale it up quite a bit. Select the mask, copy the mask and paste the mask inside the ice layer. And I'm not sure why is that. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here, but in my case, I have to rescale the mask. Sorry, I'm wrong here. So select the mask, transform, scale, and then I try to fit the mask on top of my layer. So I use this little boxes and the scaling. So if anybody has an idea how to do this in an easy way, please let me know. So, but in this case, I just try to bring it in as accurate as possible. Okay, almost. Here we have it. Good. Inside the mask, we increase the feather. Have just to your likes, something around 8 or 10, whatever. We close everything. Right click on the ice image and make a new composite shot. Just agree. OK. So now we have the ice layer and yeah, nothing is happening. So we open this up, zoom out a little bit. And yeah, if you select the hand, you can reposition the picture, select the mask tool, rectangle mask tool, not working. Of course, we have to select the picture first and I will do a rectangle just as big as the picture, reselect the arrow. Now you can move the mask. So bring it just to the bottom of the picture. Go 
to the beginning of the timeline, select transform, keyframe the pass, move a bit further, not too far because then the mask is going up too slow. So something around a second, we can readjust this later and bring up the mask again. So if we go back to the composite shot, the ice is increasing from the bottom to the top. Inside the mask layer, you can see the mask and readjust it a little bit. Yeah, so this should do the job here. And still you can expand the mask a little bit or increase the feather. So if we move again, we can still, uh, still see there's a sharp edge. So back in the ice composite shot, I will increase the feather strength as well. So let's scale to fit and do a little bit magic. Select the effects folder and find yourself the color correction, the color correction wheels. Put it into the effects folder, open it up, and then we make it a little bit cold on the whole thing. So just bring the color down to a bluish, yeah, something bright blue, not too dark. And I think that's good. Okay, let's get back to the main composite shot. Go to its transform properties and lower the opacity. Yeah, something around 76. Yeah, depends on your footage, but so you can still see the actor behind the eyes. Just try the best settings. Back in the eyes composite shot, I will look out for the light and flares, the auto light flares and bring it into the effects. You can pull it to the right or just to the top, doesn't matter. Open up its controls and I'm looking for digital blocks. I increase the intensity, oh, sorry, 1.5. And then, yeah, of course we can increase the threshold as well. So in the hotspot generation, just to your likes, not too bright. Yeah, something like this, 0.76. Okay, open up the hotspot, change the color here to a light blue as well. So it fits more into the, the ice. The next effect is in the grunge folder, the world famous lens dirt. And I would say we just leave it like it is. Now let's check the composite shot. And there you can see the lens dirt is yeah, giving me a cool head as well. So the ice is not just coming from below, it's coming from the top as well. If you like to, in the layers property, you can change the blend mode to screen or try something else, try add, for example. So you get some different looks here as well, but I think I will stay with screen. Back in our ice composite shot, I'm looking for the insect vision and just put it in the effects folder. Here we change a few things, the lens size down to five and the bulk to 3.5 and we leave the rest as it is. Another effect, the wave or waves open up its controls. 
Yeah, and here we changed something as well. We will change the first one down to five. The free frequency up to 18. And yeah, we leave the rest as it is. Let's have a look. Well, this looks more like ice. So I think it's still a bit too slow. So back in our ice composite shop shot, I select the mask, the transform, the pass, and I just bring in this keyframe a little bit more. So it will work a little bit faster. Yeah, that's better. So inside the main composite shot, I'm creating a new grade layer and just make it to the length of my clips. And here we will change something as well. Again, we are looking for the light flares and the auto light flares, bring it to the effects, change it to anamorphic enterprise Let's have a look. Here the settings, of course, depend on your footage. So in this case, I can't see anything. So yeah, I have to increase the intensity and the threshold just a bit. Yeah. Not too much, just a little bit. So we have a little bit of light flickering on the ice layer. So and the last one is the glow effect onto the grade layer. Just again, to your likes, I will bring it down quite a lot, maybe to 0.5. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. There you have it, somebody frozen into ice and yeah, have fun trying it out and hopefully see you next time again. Bye bye.